<clears throat> of the Afrocentric Home Decor and Style channel. Hey, ladies. I know my voice is a little off. <clears throat> Not really sure why, but it could be sleeping under these fans that I don't really need two fans. I just like him. So it's like, yeah, I like it. So, yes, ladies, I am playing with my beauty. I'm getting ready for a wonderful class that I'm going to have on this. What is it? Uh, this Sunday from 1 to 3 p.m. It's actually, I'm sorry, from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's not my class. It's the class of the United States. It is 3 o'clock in the morning. So if no one gets on, I will totally understand. But today for me is to do what you feel when you feel it. Do what you feel when you feel it. Day. So it's like I woke up in spirit saying, what, do I, what, should, <clears throat> what would you normally do? What could you do? I could go in the shower and bathe and but do you feel like doing that right now and if a better question is what do you feel like doing instead i wanted to take off my headscarf because that's what i had on <coughs> and i want to i want to put on some lipstick and i didn't even get to take my bath yet which you know i will today is just about being around the house there's a, a lot of things i gotta do take care of some state size business stateside business but a lot of the thing about living in another country particularly in uh, another continent even is that the time difference so there's physical people i have to speak to um on all the places i have to do you know but I, it's just best to do it now make a day to day to do it so even though i don't I, i'm actually feeling it more today and i'm so excited about it um but I always feel like, what if every time your intuition told you to do something, and in the moment that you did it, that you started seeing how it was the right choice, or it made you feel really good, or it was a peace that came over you. But what if your, your rational so-called mind is telling you to do the things that you should be doing, or it's normal? Some days, and today's that day for me, some days you want to just practice how to follow your intuition. A lot of people, that's their difficult thing. Like, they want stuff, but they're not following the intuition that's leading them to getting the things that they want. They're not following at all, like not at all. And they're scared. And by the time when you have to contemplate your next move so much or contemplate your every move, then you may not be going with spirit. And so, I, instead of getting in the shower right now, I decided to take off my scarf because I forgot that I did this little, it looked different last night, but I still love it because every way it's going to be different. But I did this little uh, bang thing uh, and, you know, slept with the scarf on it anyway. And my twist, and yes, they are purple, so I can't see the purple. I know that's what I love about them indoors or something. It looks... You know, I'm in the light and still can't see it, but you, it's noticeable, you will. Indoor, it looks like a dark color, but outdoor, it's purple. And I, I, I am now in love with colored braids, and I should have been got them. Should have been got them. Didn't know that that's the way to jazz it up, but. So, yeah, so you know I'm going to be doing very uh, extreme, creative things with the braids. That's why I got the singles this time. Um. So yeah, I was thinking about my beauty. That's what I wanted to do. So then Spirit said, put on this lipstick. This one is by the, uh, the I forgot, the lip bar .com, the lipbar.com, and it's called Rebel. Mm -hmm. Love this color. Um, love it more in Africa, even more, where I still want to wear lip color, but I also still don't want to be outrageous, at least in the daytime. I think when I start going out at night, I uh, will you know, see more, but I do wear my lipstick when I feel it, and it feels so good. And I think nobody's now, I don't even think anybody's looking at me anymore. I think they know me. I think they're getting to know me in the community. And I think that's really special. Uh, uh, what else I feel like doing, and I just thought about doing what's in my beauty is, listen, okay, you don't have to wait to your nails look decent to get them, you know, to go, you don't have to keep the, this messed up nail polish on. So uh, I'm going to, I got some nail polish I'm going to take this off and I'm going to go nail salon maybe today, maybe not, probably, but at least take it off and just start there. Just following the rhythm, following the mood to where I am and where I'm going. 
Yeah, I love this space. So I was, I was, I thought I wanted to join this group. It's a, it's like a, a Bohemian decor group, and it's you know on Facebook. And then when I joined it, I realized that I don't think I was really into it. I mean, every group has guidelines, and I think guidelines are so important so you can have cohesiveness in your group. Like, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, I just have a hard time following them, and I'll start. Uh, it's too rigid for me to follow because I just feel it. I realize Afrocentric, only thing I will, I word I would like to keep is, in a lot of ways is... Uh, you know, stay in the word or not, like African has to be in the center. It's that's my center is the African part. Even Afro Bohemian is fine, but the African is the reason why it's first. You know, Afro meaning from the diaspora or African, you know. So my aesthetic is African. It's um but not whatever that means for me, whatever that means for you. And my I just it's gotta be first or it last because that's what's up. But how it's displayed is different now for me. It doesn't have to be maximalist. It doesn't have to be minimalist. It doesn't have to follow any rules because I don't like the, even the rules. Uh, it could be because I think that style is personal. I do. I mean, I think that not a lot of people really say people say, it, but they don't. The people that say it mean it, mean it but everybody else that listens is not going to follow because. I, I don't know, like when I see those groups, it's just uh, rigid, like I mean this and not that, and it should include this, but not that. But And, and kindly, I love it. I mean, I appreciate it. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with the group. I appreciate it, and this might have been a group for you and, and give you another recommendation of a group that may be for you. I love that, because I do feel like Facebook is so hard. You have to have control, you do, of your groups at the same time. Like the core is so, ooh, you know, like I, I don't, I, I have a channel app from Central Comb Decor and I would love to see, email me your, your stuff and your pictures. I would love to see what you're doing if you're proud of your home. You know, I feel like if it's me following any rules or, you know, it's interesting, not even rules, not even rules. People would ask, like so a lot of people go to Pinterest or something for, or maybe YouTube for inspirations on how to decorate their house, particularly if they've gone for a certain style or just in general, really. Not me. Like, I don't want to see, I don't want to be influenced by anybody else. Even though in the world you're being influenced by somebody, even when I walk out, right? I, but I want to be influenced by my own findings or my own imagination. I want to believe at least that I thought of it first. You know what I'm saying? Even if I didn't, I want to believe that I thought of it. Or I want it to be a combination of so many different things. So, I, and it keeps me, in a way you would think that's like, oh, but you're taking a long route or what's wrong with a little inspiration. No, 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 no. I got inspiration for other things. But in that, I get inspired by nature or I don't even say because that's, that seems so cliche now. I get inspired by everyday happenings. The things that inspire me in Africa is, of course, it's different than anything else. I wasn't in Africa before. So, but even in general, even when I was in Africa, my inspiration doesn't necessarily come from others. When I see other people's stuff, I, I got a, it's an issue. Like, I'll try to, I'll start getting caught up in that's what I want because I keep seeing it. And then I put it in my house and my spirit never lies. That's the thing I get rid of or I feel like I wasted my money on. I, I have to, like, a lot of times when y'all give me suggestions, I'll be, I mean, I love y'all. I'm so probably not going to take them, but I'm probably going to take them. Maybe so I'll take from it, but I prefer to find it myself. That's the kind of decorator. So even the mistakes or not mistakes, I want to see if they're mistakes for me. And I prefer, again, to find it myself. Like, that's a real big one. I like the journey. I mean, a lot of people, probably, maybe they don't. I love I loved the journey, actually. I love the journey of, you know, the curtains and that instead of two panels, I needed four or all four. Or let's see if I need more. I like the spoon-fed process of decorating. And, and, and learning and growing. I, I, I don't know. I don't want, I don't really care for people to tell me what they would do or how they would do it. it. It doesn't interest me. Like, it's not, no. I mean, I prefer not to only because I want to learn. But, I mean, like, read, you know, stuff that, like, go over here. The, the, the fabric is cheaper. <laughs> yeah, that's cool advice. Like, yeah, a girl needs something like that, you know. Or shop there or they have them over here. You know, I love that. 
But that, like, pull it up and put that and put this color on the bed and run those on the... To see, then that would be your style. I, You know, I never really actually understood it, and I love it. I don't know. Y'all tell me maybe it's just a forum for it, but I... I don't know if somebody's telling you exactly what th that you should take that off and put that on and get that color to pop to match that and then take that. But then why you got a bit? Why I got a channel? Because then it wouldn't really be my expression; it would be yours. So I, I, I mean, when I think about it more and more, it's every, it's, 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 as an artist, it's like, well, no, I know. Let me see. Let me go find it and know that color I hate and what you suggested because you got to feel really good in your space all the time so other people might technically can give you something that they learn in school or they saw in a video or even that they experience and it might really work for their eyes their eyes because you know there's all these theories about placement there's some placements that have just dope and your eyes do do that thing but I'm uh, I wasn't in the states very used to uh, theories from maybe um, Eurocentric points of view so I'm really not in, in, in Africa. Like, I'm really not. I'm, I'm an intuitive decorator. Like, I just got to feel it. The room, the space has a energy. The space has spirit. Like, I believe that. And Africa makes me really understand that this, when I first moved into this apartment, and I still get the feeling, and I know something is up with it because Kwame gets the feeling too, my friend. The kitchen, the oldest, the whatever, it's not even the physical beauty of the kitchen. The kitchen felt like somebody did some cooks in here that got down it felt felt it feels like somebody was throwing down in that kitchen like not and not just one somebody's who all the people that lived here of course this is africa y'all this is africa and people cook you know what i'm saying so and you just feel like you want to put a table there i took a little plastic table you remember this plastic table I, I, I it goes many places in this apartment and I had an Indian, I, you couldn't tell me nothing. Like I was being able to chop at the table, sit. And even Kwame, like he would bring, I would, he put, put start putting the two chairs in it. Cause I, he would bring a chair for himself and one for me. Cause I'd be in the other room and we love it. He's like, yeah, the, I said the kitchen, right? He's like, yeah, the kitchen. Like we both, you would feel it too. Because a room tells you what they want and what they need. And every room and every apartment is different. That's why sometimes we're looking or watching other or magazines and trying to duplicate it it just you like the way it looked because they stage it for you like the way it look and they doing all that tricks with your eyes to make you think that i can see it better therefore i, I feel it better but in actuality you, you don't know what your chaos or your calm is somebody else's calm could be your, your chaos and somebody else's chaos could be your calm and, and everything in between you know, so I, I, uh, yeah, I, mm, the house got to talk to me. Yeah, like a lot of people always suggest to me, even the other house, the curtains high. I don't know why they don't do nothing for me. I'm fine with the curtains around uh, the frame that's already on. But I'm, but somebody would not think it's a big deal to make rods. And I'm good with the making rods. Like that means something to me. It has to, I don't know, like African or showing of the Africans. No, I don't really want to say I say wow you know all these stores that we as people that call them afro bohemian style if that's your style if that's what you the name or name that I've used but I realize now I'm probably not really because I'm more on the afro than the bohemian like in this space I'm not I'm, to, I'm not even trying to I don't know the bohemian is not coming naturally to me it's I'm in Africa so I don't think about that part as much I want I want it authentic in, in this way, and it, because what is authentic in so many ways, like, because I mean, there's masks that might have been made years ago that you buy, but I work in the arts, I mean, I, I feel like I work in the arts center, I, I'm in the arts center almost every day, and there are uh, masks that they're making right now today, and it, so they're all not old, some are brand new, and that's okay, the artistry is there, and the way, the tools, different tools, because yeah, you got modern, a little more modern, a little more, I mean, in Ghana, most things are still made more traditional because they don't have a lot of those fancy tools. But it doesn't matter, and I realize I used to think it makes a difference. It doesn't. The making of a mask being imported or exported to you is the value and the worth and the layers of work. That That's the part that's even deeper. And that's something that I learned, and I love it. So 
but you know um i i see the artists like you know kwame says making things for just to sell because sometimes people i you know are not not so they don't appreciate the artistry they don't even know it like i think we have to get reintroduced reintroduced or introduced to our legacy and using that culture and legacy and ultimately healing in our decor and for me african decor so now you see my I, it's more important for me to have the indinkra symbols that are spiritual symbols of law and conduct of conduct in a society in order for the society to thrive so it actually has real meaning and it's and it didn't come from ross you know, I, I know all those stores are closed, all the home decor, but it's fine time, including me. I was, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to all of us, guilty of going in them stores. We got to start supporting and giving to our own folks that buy it, that have something that's not so mass produced. Even though they are outsourcing to Vietnam and that a lot of this stuff is made in Asia and the stuff is beautifully made, the stuff is gorgeous, but not everything. Some of that stuff was junk. Now, a lot of us didn't even get the Bohemian stuff. That's what they were going to label it, but it was beautiful. And I'm all for uh, the work of, the, uh, of, the, of Asians in general. They're beautiful. But Africans make everything else look like it's sitting down. Like, it's so, we so dope. And just, it's the motherland, you know. And supporting your people is going to be key. So now we will have homes that have stories. The stuff came from somewhere. Somebody knew about it. You know, I think the Ghana-U.S. connection is going to be dope. I don't think everybody's going to move to Africa Black. I think a lot of people might stay in the States. And I think that y'all is going to need some African stuff, too. And so, you know, I'm just glad to be a part of it. But everything, to me, yeah, it's got to be meaningful to me. Not trying to fit into some style, especially some Eurocentric, I'm saying naming of. If you happen to hit that style by doing what you do, you know, by decorating the way you do, and you just somebody say, oh, that's traditional, you'll be like, I don't even know what traditional is, I was just doing me, hey, that's, but I don't want to try, like, I don't want to try, so, but I did notice that I was like, ooh, the bohemian part could come back, but I don't feel the bohemian part as much. Bohemian part for me in my old house was the beautiful, I, now I love those stools, and I've seen, I would maybe do the same stool style, although I'm not sure if, I don't think I'm going to do those. I, you know what I think is more realistic, and it was realistic then too, is see here, a regular, not, okay, chairs that look like chairs that have the four legs that people can actually sit in and still durable, beautiful, and shows the craft woman and menship of the art. That's what I think makes more sense here. So those low stools, ain't nobody going up and down. I, no, not here. Maybe, I don't know. I, didn't, I, didn't been, I haven't been in North Africa, but it could be different there. But no, I think, uh, I mean, uh, and they, yeah, it, it needs to be a little more utilitarian. I don't know if that's right. Like utility, but very beautiful still. And I found some perfect chairs that they use the roping, that they rope it, and the roping is going to be in beautiful colors. And I got the idea from One Africa, the restaurant there when I was at the Cape Coast. And it was, it was, it was like, he said, oh yeah, I know the woman, a woman that does this and the people that do that. So I'm going to the people that do that work, you know. So it's still colorful and beautiful, but it works. So I care that word that the people here use everything. Even going grocery shopping or market shopping, when you buy bananas, you can just buy five. When you buy tomatoes, you can just buy six. You can, when you buy okra, they give you eight or ten. Even in the Caribbean, they don't give you... We buy bags full because we want to store it in the whole bin. And it could be a storage issue as well, but it's almost like more than that. They, they use what they need. And why spend the money all when that money could go somewhere else? It's kind of like growing up, I guess, so-called not having a lot of material stuff and not having a lot of money. In a way, I, it was healthier, and I ate idea that you use what you got and you use what you need and I feel like the house again dictates the house dictated that they didn't want those plastic rods that go into how long does it take for those rods to break down at least the wood is from the tree you know and it can be reused 
and a lot of the wood is already here, you know, so, and I think that this does something for us to bring, like I thought about it, so I don't see people here having plants, now I gotta look more, I just got here in Ghana to see if I can get plants, but I don't necessarily have to have plants, it's not, they take up the sun and I want the sun, I, I'm not in it, but I am into the plant life. And sometimes when we think of a plant, we forget the root, or we think of we forget the trunk, or, and that's why I'm in Africa, they don't forget anything. They use it all. So having the wooden from the distilled nature, from the earth, the tree trunk, if you will, the wood, the timber, now represents the naturalness that I want to bring in. I remember I wanted to bring it in with the bamboo, but I'll do something else with the bamboo. I, I, I'm going to bring in some bamboo furniture as well. I'll do something else with the bamboo, but I really want to use the natural elements because when you don't have the plant, you still have the plant. You still, you just forget that's the, that's a deep, that's a good part of the plant. It's like the coconut cups that I have on my uh, website, on my, yeah. Uh, for the boutique, it, how cool, I mean, you're talking about reusing, but oh, what? Like, and you still, and you're drinking out of that purity, and it's just, it's not, it's not interfering with the absorption of the vitamins and minerals or whatever you're drinking. Like, come on now. Like, so I'm about it. Like, I'm, I'm, and so, yeah, sometimes I see beautiful pictures and stuff or groups and I, and I just, it's too much influence and I don't want it. I want to, I want to discover. I, I, I think one of the best parts for me is the sense of discovery. I want to discover. It's, it's real simple. So, yeah, so I, I, I always know that first I'll be thinking, like, why am I not looking at it? Because I want, like I said, even if it's a myth, I want to believe. I want to believe that I've got, I came up with it. I, creativity is making something out of nothing. Working with exactly what you got. Being inspired by talking. Sometimes I'm inspired by a food that I eat. Yes, the eating the food at the restaurant, the walking down the street, the seeing a scene at Makola, like life, the, the women carrying the baskets and how the food was laid, like the, oh my gosh, like they got these baskets that the market women have and I think I'm, I'm going to figure out where to buy them and bring those into the house. That would be weird for the good names because it's the market women baskets and they just throw some away when they get raggedy and it's no big deal. But to me, them baskets are so damn dope, y'all. And so everything don't have to be, and they already sell them. But, and I know, I'm going to ask Kwame, and I'll be like, Kwame, just get up. I need to, he, he's good with it. I need them baskets. I saw them at Makola. I can buy those baskets. The baskets are beautiful. But I want to be purposeful and buy baskets. I need a uh, hamper. So instead of buying a hamper ready-made, which is a little more expensive, when I show you them baskets, them baskets wasn't that cheap, okay? Not exactly. Not, not, I mean, I'm not they're not that expensive, but they're still... I can get the market women baskets they be having that they buy from the, I see the free, I saw the place that sells them. I was like, oh yeah, they're giving these away. They also have these fan things that they use an outdoor oven and it's a name for it and I don't know. And I made the contumery outdoors, but you have to have the coal, the charcoal, and then they light it and then you have to fan the fire, right? And they have these special fans that you fan the fire but they look like placemats. That is not what they are. They are fire fanners, okay? I know, because I asked. And they are dope. They would look, they're made from a natural material, almost like a grass dried, grass kind of looking. I don't know exactly, but I'm telling you, leaf, like, yeah, grass. And it's woven. You could put your plate inside that. Oh my God, first of all, with my Ghanaian thing, because you can get things like watche, like a rice and beans, in the leaf. Is that the banana leaf? I don't know what green it is, but it reminds you that in a sense of the food, see, and the association, see, and I can associate the food with the, yes, y'all, like I'm trying to tell you, I'm going to use, I'm going to buy them as placemats. They sell them for nothing because they're so inexpensive because they made for something else. That is what Ghana is bringing. Like when I start now, I realize when I start getting down to the accessories, because right now I'm doing the, the furniture. Y'all can see that I'm doing the hard stuff first. When I get down to the accessories, okay, when I get down to accessories, the baskets that already is, so I'm not spending a whole bunch of money. They actually have purpose and usage. It's a story. Loving it. And those fanners. 
Oh my God, every time I see them, I be like, they don't know, this is a work of art here. Oh my God, these are placemats, but they're not. They're fire fanners, it's so great. I know it's called another name, I just call them fire fanners. And even like, oh yeah, oh yeah, even the fire fanner, I want that just for nostalgia. Maybe put it on top of the refrigerator. I'll show you, they sell them here. They actually use them, so it's not nostalgic, but some people do. Some people just use their oven in their house. I mean, this is very modern, but uh, some people actually, um, still use it they use it in a compound like the mama prefer they got a kitchen but they they it's i love it it's excellent but you got to be fanning so it's you know it's old school i want to get one of those and there's something else that they oh i would love to have the fufu and the pounding stick and the, the, the receiving bowl thing just to have it like i would love to lay that somewhere because see now that's saying this is ghana and fufu and fufu making is so important to the culture and even me not making fufu ever, but having that tool, see, now that's something beautiful. So when I start doing accessorizing, you're going to see me go shopping in the strangest places. I'm going to get the fufu thing and the this and that and really have those. And the best part is people can actually use it. See, somebody will come here like my little grinder that they have, not the mortar and pestle, they do have that as well, but the other one that to, to smash like the pe pepe, which is the hot peppers. Or I, Kwame gave it to me and thought I would use it too. Of course, I did. I knew I, I mean, that was decorations for me. We was, uh, But actually, I changed my mind. I am going to use it now. I'll tell you why, because I just thought how it's natural. But it was when I got those decorations. And then... Uh, yeah, I was calling Kane, uh, Faustina, and she was in it. I was like, yeah, go ahead, girl. She's like, yes, the natural way. It really is better. It makes the food taste better. It's the clay on it. Like, it's great. I was like, yeah. So uh, if I get that fan burner, see, she could use it. Or the food food, they'll go, because people, the next door neighbors pound for food food. They just go right side out. They do want to put a little seat, a little stool. Now, it's another thing, though. They do use these stools. Let me show you something I want to do with them, I'll tell you. When they're fanning the, 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 the pot the, or the fire to cook their food outside, or when they're doing laundry, that same stool is used. When they're washing clothes with the buckets, they put their two buckets and wash the clothes. Uh, any down activity, cutting food outside, whatever, they have these stools. But they're very, now they're two, they're just basic. They're just wood and little legs in there, but they're not cute. But those painted, the colors of the red, gold, and green, all, all red, yellow, and green, all those same stools, but just painted the Ghanaian flag colors. Yeah, I don't know what to say, like just pops of color without being too, and only three or something, not too much. Remember, I like the colors that I already have, the colors that I'm already playing with, so. So, yeah, y'all, so, yeah, y'all. I'm getting used to so many things, but yeah, good morning, my Che, Etchy San. Elaine, I'm up, it's only midnight here. That's right, that's right for my West Coasters. Yes, well, welcome, Aquaba. Nikki says, happy Friday from Los Angeles. Hey, that's right, all my West Coasters, yes. Hey, happy Friday to you. I'm glad to catch you live. Me too, Nikki. I love functional artwork. Yes. Nikki said, I'm beginning to live my life in that way. Use what I have. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Felicia, Lisa, you're looking beautiful. Oh, me, Darcy. Hey, Frank, greetings from Germany to our beautiful black family. Yes, yes, y'all. Yes, y'all, I'm finding myself in Ghana, and I, I'm finding, like, I could say my style in Africa because that's where I, I want to be. That's where I want to travel to, you know, for the rest of my life. I want to be in the continent. I want to be on the continent. Like, I'm good. Like, I'm good. I, don't, I mean, I, I, I would love, to, I could live here, and I could live, I mean, I don't know if there's other places in the continent I want to. I don't, I don't, listen, you got to pick a place at some point, you know, and I pick Ghana. I choose Ghana. Ghana's working for me. And if something else is to be, then it's to be. But I'm going to be traveling to other parts because there's other artwork and other customs in a sense and ways of doing things. And it's a way, it's like teaching. Can you imagine if you had your house of African, African specifically art and pieces and understand this is from the Togo people. And in the Togo, people that make these believe that the lines make you godlike. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the Ashanti, the symbols are a representation of God, right? Representation of law and order, like I said. It's beautiful. It's healing. And in the way we, uh, and then your furniture or your surrounding is healing. It should be. And that's whatever style. But I'm the Afrocentric on the core. 
So now I'm talking about it. African at the center. I don't like I, I, boho. If you love boho, it's beautiful. I love boho when I loved it. I loved it. It was it was a mood. Oh my god! Like it was such a mood, and I loved it. I loved it. I did when I did, and then I noticed I I, I was didn't I didn't I, I was going drowning in it. Um, I think after a while, I was like I said, I was just buying things to feel better at some point. I think that's all that was, and that's okay. But I still love my stuff, and I'm going to probably sell most of my stuff. The thing that I, if I could have anything from my old place, and it, I don't even know if, if my the style that I think that I'm going for, it would fit. So see, I wouldn't even. It would be my mud cloth chair, uh, and I say it, and I can't figure out a place here that would fit that. You know what? I'm gonna be honest. Um, I'm gonna keep that because that's in the family, but. Um, and maybe I won't. Maybe I'll sell it, to be honest. I mean, things get sold all the time and passed on. Because um, it's not a chair you can really, you can't sit on it. So y'all need to know. That's why I'm probably in that peacock chair. Can't sit on that either. So, but that's okay. You got furniture for not sitting. I think now, because I'm in Africa, I want more function. So the truth is, I wouldn't. Try keeping people off a chair that come over. They African. That's a C. Now you can't sit on that. Get rid of that. You know, I like that idea. I think that's what's keeping my, my home kind of, you know, so I would say minimalist. I wouldn't say, I, I, I don't know, maybe it is. But so I just want things that function more. And so, yeah, I, everything there, none of it. If I brought even a clock of Africa, it would be not the same. It would, None of it would work for me here. First of all, it brings me back memories of there. And I want those memories to be there. They were beautiful. It's quaint, but that's that energy. So I, like I said, each place dictates itself. And sometimes trying to bring that old into the new, for a while you might think it's cool. After a while you might be like, you know what, as much as I love this, I it's different now. I, I want to love something new. And uh, yeah, so actually, I most likely am going to really just sell everything, even if it's at the, out of the storage. And I may have to come back at some point to the States and I'll see how that's going to look. If not, uh, and to get, you know, to go back to the States to get, uh, to, to sell everything that I have, but if not, you know, I really don't even have to do that. My sister can sell from this, from the storage unit. I don't have to do nothing. Actually, I don't have to go back to the state for anything. I just thought about it. Cause there's nothing in there. She didn't just take out my family pictures. Everything else, I'm ready to let it go. And I would love to have the money for it. So if you are in the area of North Carolina, come through my girl, let me know. Send me an email, theblackberrybeauty at gmail.com theblackberrybeauty at gmail.com send me an email uh, and uh, we can arrange for you to it's actually still in the apartment and it might be in there for a little while longer so you may be able to uh, set up with Janae an appointment to come by you know, what you want because uh, I'm out like I'm out like I, I want the money because I, I want the money because I want this land that I want to purchase or the, the fees for it and I need to set shop up and just make these multiple streams of incomes and uh as people say i don't know i don't know if i got multiple or it's just all one and be as creative as i possibly can and would like to be because i'm creative i love to create and i don't want to be i don't want to be pigeonholed i don't want to be yeah I, I don't know i don't know i don't know you know i think that designer is born and could be taught as well um, but I still think that some of you have design aesthetics that you got it. Just let it come out. And even if it don't always look great into you, don't let that one first or few times stop you. You get in your groove. That's helping you define your groove. And like I said, if you listen to the place, the place is going to lead you to what you need. And and because you nobody can tell you because they don't know what's important to you, what values you're feeling now, how the place has changed you. Because people do think that, I know they be like, no, girl, we know you're going to view the maximalist. Some people that tune in late, and I'm going, no, y'all, y'all missed a lot of videos. Like, Africa, uh, it's true, I don't need all the masks. Isn't that funny? Well, no, that's not, because like I said, the people are enough. I'm into the fabrics right now. I don't want a lot of baskets. I actually just want one for the hamper. If I feel a need for another one, I'll get it. I, I don't want to go crazy with any of it because I, 
I want the space to feel very eerie. You know, an African house can get very hot. And right now, I don't have air conditioning, which I love, which you, which you would feel normal. People, when I have the two fans on in one room, they just think it's ridiculous. So it is. The air is beautiful. There's a breeze that comes in. So I'm trying to capture uh, uh, decorating for my environment. And so, yeah, you want the breeze, right? So you don't really want a lot of stuff. You want that, that, I'm going to tell you that, that one right there. You want that breeze. You want that floor cleanse because a lot of dust does come in. So... So it's a lot, you know, you just got to know, you want that comfort, that ease. Right now, it's the color, although I'm going to paint the blue, the purple blue to cover the white that's coming through. This is so, such so a soothing color. The curtains on this side as well, it's going to be dope. And they are smaller now, see. So the rods were way too big, we can get them cut again. Um, to have the curtains there and then the, the fullness of the curtains is about to go there to uh and then let the rest speak you know i don't know i'm, I'm thinking about the table i'm gonna have that mirror oh, right here this mirror the mirror that you don't see but the one quality made over the wall because it matches the bed and then what else is creating something else i don't know if it's the rod i think the rod is gonna match the bed the symbols on the bed or just the side so see, I like that. I kind of, you notice that I'm not doing different curtains over there, different pattern over there. No, I want that feel of, you know, just it matches, but it's relaxed, it's peaceful. It's like I said, when I traveled and stayed all on Airbnbs and even at hotel I stayed in, in Cape Coast, I didn't love it. I want that, I want that simple, feeling just like when the breeze blowing the curtains the very clean room very relaxing very soothing and very much africa for me so i i mean i wanted that and i and i'm so i'm creating that it doesn't have to be a lot because i understand hotels you know that's a hard thing guest houses hotels when people keep coming and staying it's very difficult i'm sure to keep a vibe that is, but I guess you gotta charge a lot and that is different, you know, that you keep up the maintenance of it all. But anyway, I'm just letting the house and the environment and, and the people help me when I say stuff and they go, oh no, the, wet, the, the rain or the moisture or the heat or the, there's things you gotta know. There's things you gotta know and it, it's helpful because then you're like, oh, okay, cool. Okay, I get that. And then you start decorating from a different point of view because you're in an environment that's different. But I'm more inspired by not what you suggest or tell me or or even that I see or the groups as I don't join the groups. I really don't actually watch home record videos. No, I used to watch like, that's because I was so, wow, African change. Because I was so happy to see black women uh, behind home decor. I was unhappy to see us that we support these little stores so much, but that's okay. But I, because I was in it too. But I was happy, so I would watch just home decor because I want to see my people. And then when I realized, oh, it's so my, not my design, and I probably stopped that time ago. But I still like the, the stuff is relevant when I was in the States. Everything's a little different now, anyway. Someone was. So I really didn't watch a lot of home decor because I liked Afrocentric home decor. I didn't like the bling. I didn't like all the white. I didn't like the gray. I didn't know, no, that's still not me. And uh, so I just didn't, it wasn't for me, but it was nice seeing black folks. But because now I only see black folks all day, I don't probably watch as much. I don't watch, I don't watch, I've been stopped home decor for a while, I think a few months when I was even in the States, but uh, I especially don't watch a lot of home decor in general because if I'm watching to see black folks, I get to see black people all day now. So I get my feel, you know what I'm saying? So no, I um, um, I want to feel it and think it, and I don't know what that is. If I want to know for you as a decorator, do you like to get inspiration from magazines, videos, even like mine, right? Um, videos, other people telling you what they were doing and you do it too, or would you like, do you like, how do you feel about taking suggestions from others uh, for your decor? Because there's nothing wrong with it. Everybody has a, I'm just trying to feel like everybody's vibe and see how, like, we all are probably different. 
I personally uh, don't look for inspiration through. Now it's interesting though, I remember this, and it's interesting that I still do my own thing. When I started first getting my hair braided, I would look for information for cornrow hairstyles and say, hey, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. But I realized that even when I got the styles, if you'll notice, I, I kept it in that style for a second, and I start taking that style and turning it into other styles. I am just naturally creative, and I think most people are. And if I, I just, I can't say what I would do. I gotta look at my face on that day, and then I decide well, what my hair is gonna look like. And then I play with it and do more stuff. Oh, it could do this, oh, it could go this way, oh, it frames me in this way, oh, it gives me that look, you know? I just love it, I just love it. I love art, I love creativity. And I talk about it more, don't I? I talk about the love of it more, I feel like, since I've been in Africa, I feel like that's what I've always been. Since I was a youngster, I was an artist, and I didn't understand it because I knew I didn't paint, I didn't sing, I didn't dance, although I do dance, and I, you know, I didn't paint, I didn't do that, so I didn't get, an artist was a person who was artistic that the way I wore my hair, or the way I wore my clothes, oh my God, right? Or the way I did a lot of things was very artistic. And then it became my poetry and my writing. I wrote a lot and then I wrote poems. That was mostly what I did. And then of course my spoken word. And then it became even my spiritual art and the eating and the vegan and the raw foods. I mean, it's art. It's all art. My style, it's art. And I, I, I tell you, I wish in some ways, I mean, because I know how good life is when you realize it's all divine and perfectly ordered. But if you, if I knew that in a way, because my mother was a writer, she was a fashion designer, she, she was a stylist, she was a trendsetter, she was a model. Like my mama was what, but just never realized. So she died at 57 year old of lung cancer. It's too young. But I come from, my father was an artist too. My father was a, same thing, my mother, they were hung out in the village, in Greenwich, Greenwich Village, two black folks, right in the Greenwich Village. And my father was a dresser, loved fashion, was loved, I'm so much like him, like that being out, he's a cancer though, I love mean, cancer as well. Being out, being seen, fur coats, like he used to wear the ring, diamond rings, but you know, he wasn't a pimp, he was fly. Just the artness, the out there as a man, you know, he was, that's why I liked guys like him in the village. Like, I love that Jimmy Hunter type, but mine was even dressed. Uh, uh, artistic, uh, could be around a whole bunch of people, love cultures. Oh my God, my father, like everybody tells me, because now I found his family, my mom told me, well, just like him, I never met him, I met him once or twice. So that style, that standing out, that fast, that's me. Period. Period. And I just talk about it and I embrace it so much more. And it makes for a wonderful life because other people are like, oh, she's an artist or she's doing her thing. or So, yeah. What about you? What are you? How do you get inspired? Do you need help? Do you like when people tell you what they would do to your space? Or do you prefer to find out for yourself? Do Because it's okay because some of us seek... Uh, uh, interior designers, that's wonderful. Decorators, I mean, a, deco a designer who want, likes to do that wants that. So that's why there's no judgment. It's just what works best for you. I would love to know. So, uh, yes, I'm the, yes, thank you. You're looking so cute. That's ancestors' blessings. Oh, me Darcy, me Darcy, Frank. Yeah, I feel. Africa, it's just wonderful. My whole life is just different. My whole life is free. My whole life is, I loved it. My boy, I'm shouting you out, TT. I think it's TT. I don't know. You know who you are. You know who you are, brother. You donate to me, and I appreciate that. And you know, he said something. He was like, Yeah, you know, I love the way he wrote me an email. Y'all should write emails. He said, I love the way you said. Not your boyfriend, but you know, you would like your like your lover or you would entertain the idea of lovers or having a lover. And how, there's a freedom in that, right? As a woman to say, Oh, this is my lover. It's so truthful. It's to the points what it is. It says it should say to you what it's not, you know? Like just there's a freedom that I have with myself. My age makes help me to be free, my my opportunities, the feeling of feeling free, you know. 
And so it makes you free in your dating, choosing how you want to do it, the way it looks. You know, y'all talk about the grown woman-ish, the grown and sexy. Like, I, I, I'm I, all related to that. Like, I'm all good. It, it is so different because you feel so good about yourself and you feel so empowered that you allow more good to come in. Like, you have to allow good for a lot of us because we've guilted ourselves that we're bad or we need to go through inf degrees to deserve anything. So once you get over that, your deservability, you deserve to be on this earth, you deserve to take space, up space, and you deserve to be and live the life you want. Like, And then you go and you see, you have a connection, you have a homeland, you're not this black person from the States or Canada, whatever, living this this existence and never connected. And everybody has a culture and all the other black people know where their communities or where their, their ancestors come from. You do too. You you do too. Don't let them believe that, okay, you don't know exactly the country. You could go on African, you could take the African ancestry test. I'm not even affiliated them, but I would be because they're dope. And you could find out. So then nobody could even take that. Then you got your tribe, so what? What's the problem? I mean, but the fact is, you come to Africa, then you go, oh my God, they lied. This continent holds a place for me. I have a connection. You know the Chinese can go back home. You know they have a bank in New York. I mean, same thing. We have a bank of Africa here. We have a bank of Africa. You should come. You should see it. You have, uh, you may not own the mountain. Maybe no real connection because that connection has been we, we are building rebuilding it it's a little broken that that financially you could have that connection to the bank of africa being in the united states wonderful thing we want to see all that but you at least this on a gene genetic uh from a genetic point of view from a cultural point of view from a race ethnicity even a gender point of view you have a connection to a motherland. You do come from someplace. This is it. No one will ever make you feel like you don't know who you are and what you are. This is yours. And when you come, you feel you're like, oh, shit, like this is my people. Like, I am somebody. Like, I am somebody. Like, I'm African. I'm an African. I'm a descendant from the Africans. Like, that's huge. That's huge. That is, that is like, now you walk, it's like, you got your esteem, you got your badge, you, you like, yes, I'm, so, oh my God, I never, I now know there's a country that I'm connected to. I can choose the flag if I want to. The continent is mine. Like, I am not out here alone. I do not know myself. I do not know. I got, and woo, that's a charge that no one can ever take from you. That is a vibe that is so amazing that even Africans in the continent don't realize it because they already have it and that's okay they with you they still celebrating with you they're happy you're happy they're happy you're home don't get, don't get it twisted they don't feel exactly the same they do feel the same actually they, they're so happy they know because they're looking at you like well you know you're African right right because that's what I get but you're African okay I hear the American I know the American you heard Kwame say okay you say yeah you're different your accent okay that's fine you got an American accent but you got an Ashanti face what I'm trying to tell you is that's what matters where you been yeah they're gonna give you a hard time yeah yeah you kind of now you're white to all all of us are white even the German Ghanaians and the Italian Ghanaians and the Ghanaian in all these different places it don't matter okay you're still not exactly where you were can't have this thing but you can create from that place because you know where you're from. You know who you are. You see it every day. And for those that Ghanaian got Ghanaian roots, then even if you don't speak the language that well anymore, or maybe you don't speak it at all, or maybe you speak it well, but you got an accent, you still know. Guess what, black Americans? You're going to get the same feeling. I know this is magical. It's a magical ish. You didn't get the same feeling. You're going to be like, oh, wow, like, no, I'm home. Like, I'm not a foreigner. Like, they can make you. You could be a foreigner. Like, you're not from, you not. You don't matter. Like, I can't explain this to you. I can't explain it to you. I only can, like, help, help you feel it. Nobody's going to make you feel like you're not welcome. You know. They know. It's out. <laughs> it's out, y'all. It's out. Like, oh, shit. I'm dark. They dog me black. I'm black. They talk tree to me. Oh, shit. Like, I mean, it, mm. I had to get that out from this point. I had to make you understand. I had to make you understand that 
you got a country and you got a continent and you got people and you can see it the way they say things you see your family your vibe you start feeling the connections the sameness you see what was lost but really you see more what wasn't lost you know i'm an african woman i could be from any country and on a daily i get every country okay so i am that's how i know that the whole idea of you know i mean yes the cultures are beautiful to preserve the ethnicity and all that the clans but in the end they still put you in another country that you might not be from or you might be that tells you something that the africans themselves can't tell you apart <laughs> they go oh togo i ain't never been no togo ivory coast i don't know about that like i i mean you know i think i do have some togo and ivory coast though i do i think i have more than even Ghana. i don't know you know but it's like Nigeria, you know, this, yes, to all of it. It could be all of it. And y'all think it. And some people from the people think it. The Shanti's all the time had, you know, the tree. What I'm trying to say is if they calling you African and they putting you in every country, it don't matter if they don't put you in theirs, but I, I get put into Ashanti all the time. Then, hmm. That should tell you, you are connected to a whole continent of black folks. You have a source. And it is a source of humanity. So we should take it there. We should go there on it. The source of humanity comes from the continent. And you don't want to be from Africa? Are you out of your mind? The beginning of civilization as we know it. And you don't want to be a part of that. And then you come here and feel it. You so part of the foe. You feel so nurtured and loved. Just walking down the busy street of Accra. You feel like, hmm, I'm home. And I realize, okay, I heard they call Accra the New York City of God. Oh, yes, I cry. I, I say more hectic. I say, because you're not watching, you, you're not going to have random things happening like they do here. I love Accra. A cry, a cry, I'm sure a crowd could kick your butt and beat you up and chew you up and spit you out, but um, it is, uh, it has, whatever it has morphed into, uh, either you're feeling it or you don't. And I always say that because I don't want you all to run to a crowd and be like, that woman was out of her mind. I'm going to the country right now. I'm going to Pram Pram. <laughs> you lying down when you like Pram Pram it is. I'm going to Aburi. I'm going to Cape Coast, but I'm leaving. I cry. No, no. and that's when you're going to be like, I cry. What? What? Yeah, I cry. I, I get excited talking about I cry. Like, specifically, I cry. Although I love the Cape Coast. It was beautiful. I swim in that water, and I'm looking forward to having some, uh, uh, some piece of land there uh, in the eastern region because, what, what? Did I say that right? I hope so. I really want to get it right. I don't know. No, that's not the eastern region. See, I never get it right. I forget the region. Cape Coast. Somebody let me know. And uh, I really want to, because I, it's so nice to have a place to chill out, vacation, go there when I want that water. But right now I'm about this, this I cry life. Oh, my gosh. And we and like the, you know, quarantine situation, the pandemic. Imagine the pandemic is over. Oh, God, I cry. Mm -hmm. God, just, just brings out the best of me. It brings out all my aliveness my artistry it brings out my it keeps me rolling moving young i cry i cry is it's all of that and more okay so let's see thank you i know my oh i'm gonna make a love song you're looking oh thank you preach on queen thank you frank elena says i have my own eclectic style a mix of old and new i definitely take ideas from for the placement of items but the style is mine eclectic and baruch infused with crystals and candles sounds beautiful frank says you always see black people around you not other you're not a, a, alone or other people that's right that's right hi hey tina salt of the earth says that I, the diaspora just needs to learn the languages that is the gateway to understanding the customs and norms and values language breaks down culture but yes it does we have to we have to, and they tell you that. That's why I say, you know, God from me, I take back what the, the chief was right. She said it from the beginning. You want to live here? You want to stay here? You want to look like the way you look and not know the language? Because they say it, but the way you look, you don't know the language. They tell me that all the time, but you look, you look, 
African, you look Asante, you don't know the language. It's too much for them. It's like, why I look like that and not know the language? Why are you not learning the language? Why are you? And they say, talk, Kwame, you make sure she learned that language. There's a brother today, a brother from New York that's here during the lockdown. He'll be going back, I guess, once they open up the borders. But he was speaking God, and I didn't know it was he came to me with some God. And I, he was like, yo, man, you got to teach her God too, yo, because he New York. And even when he speak tree or God, he be like, like this, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> I love how he be talking like, yo, 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 Madasi, yo. I be like, yo, <laughs> Madasi. <laughs> My accent ain't that great either, but I love it. It's hilarious. I just think he's great. Yo, because he's with the Ghanaian, who is really is Ghanaian, but lives in Harlem. And he Ghanaian, so he be like, yo, yo, yo. You know, that's the guy, Ghanaian accent, but he be all, all Harlem, yo, yo. I be like, Devin it. <laughs> and then we just talk about me, be like, yo, we so lucky, yo. We in, we in Ghana, yo. We in the best place, yo. I be like, word. <laughs> it's the most great conversation because it's Ghanaian, yo, New York, yo. And be like, yo, we so blessed, yo. Why, yo? I be like, yo. <laughs> yo, it's a great language. You got to be there. If you was there, you know. You be like, yo. You be like, yo. But it's so great. So we laugh <laughs> about being in Ghana. Yes. Oh, my God. Like, what? We're blessed. We got a life, you know. But everybody's blessed. Um, yeah, no bragging. <laughs> no bragging allowed. I'm not even bragging. I'm, I don't know how this happened. But it's fun, y'all. And Accra is bomb because you can get vegan food in Accra. Oh, my God. I can eat out every day. But I shouldn't. But I do. I eat out every day almost. Because you can, but it does start to add up, you know, vegan foods, and then they give you a lot, and they see me coming, and I came in yesterday with our Kwame, and she's like, do you want one or two? You know these one plates is big for one people. These restaurants, I guess they ain't got, people still coming, but they know, it's got kind of social distancing even in the restaurant. It's not really a restaurant, it's kind of like a takeout with tables, but it's still like a restaurant. I love it, you know, I love a saucy pie. I can say anyway, I, I digress, I went on to vegan foods. I love these restaurants here. Just so you know, ha <laughs> yes, yo, but she's right. The language is everything. The language is everything. The language is everything. The language is everything. Um, the language is a passport to opportunities, love, relationships in different ways, but don't let it stop you from not coming. You should come and they would love you. And, but the language makes you feel, that just to know some words, makes you start already feeling more Ghanaian. And I would highly recommend that. I love languages, I love learning languages, and I'm learning in my own way because it's interesting. Everybody learns differently. I may not know all the words, but I know exactly what they say. I can now read Ghanaians in a different way because most of us speak in so many ways. And they do common things, and they say, and their sounds help a lot. The sounds are the O, the O, the E, the eh, 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 uh oh. It's a, oh, it's a, that right there is a language all by itself, but that one speaks more volumes than anything else. You know, you start automatically saying it in the right way at the right time, because it's a feeling that comes up. That's the one thing that I don't hear people talk about a lot, but I do. Language is not just the words. Culture is not just words, though, either, although the language is very important. I'm telling you, what I'll be saying, yeah, that's right, that's what I'm saying. They'd be like, oh, you speak Fonte? Because they switched it. Or God, because it could be three different Ghanaians, and they all from different ethnic groups, and they all can speak to each other in their own language. Fonte speaking to God, speaking to, because a lot of times, most of them know three or four languages, so they know how to speak the other person's language, even if they don't know it well. And Fonte and Tree is so close that it's just slight tonations or even words, but it's, they got that. They can still speak. I guess it's like kind of Spanish and Portuguese. There's some level you can kind of understand. French helped me understand Spanish more. Spanish helped me understand French more. I mean, it really does, to be honest. Like, like I, I noticed that. So, 
but it's always what I learned in the DR was the culture, it was the when provecho, but it was when it was done and when it was said and how I got it. I remember things from the experience of that word, the experience I'm having when they say that thing. That's what, what people do talk about. They call it, they call it immersion. So sometimes you're learning the language because or the customs or things by being around it, even if you can't understand it. So it's training your ear and also you're picking up the, the subtleties that make the relationship even more rich, right? It makes it more Ghanaian. And I get to have that all the time. Like I feel like I'm, I'm getting things about Ghana that is just being here and being in it is how you get it. <laughs> what? Ah, uh, yes, the language takes you closer to the people and open more opportunity, absolutely. But uh, yeah, but yes, you're all right. The language is, and people think it's sexy or they think it's cute. Like they always be loud. They be like, oh, she sent me Nazi. Like they, it's the most hilarious thing. Like they love it. It does, it makes them proud and happy and wow. And then they, they help you. They help me all of the time. And I be trying to say the response to Etty San and they ask me how I'm doing, I go, I am. I see I get it wrong all the time, but they, they help me and they make sure I keep saying it. They want me to win. They want you. That's what I'm saying. They want you to learn the language. They are willing to help you. It makes life easier for them and it makes that thing better. It's true. You're black. You're African. Why do you only know English? And why you know it so damn well? Like, I mean, like, it's okay, but when you with the market woman, you want to speak one of them languages. You might not speak what they speak. I mean, the house has there, but they speak tree too. That's the thing. The house can speak tree too. They can, the God can speak tree too. The tree, that's what's so beautiful. Multilingual. And we all have the opportunity. I think it was in a dream last night that it came to me that I need to focus on uh, being that, no, no, I'm going to be multilingual and it's going to be African languages. And I speak Spanish because because uh, Kwame loves Spanish, so I tend to know more Spanish than I thought I did. So my Spanish get a little, and if I talk to the people from the Ivory Coast, I get to speak the French I know, but they help me, so I feel like I speak the French a lot better. It's a lot, I mean, you can, you can, you can know some languages up in here. You can know, and people respect languages here. They respect languages here. And you can teach English, too, if you wanted to. There's, an, there's opportunities for sure. I understand your Yoruba, but can't speak it. This still isn't good enough when I go home. I know that's right. If you understand the language, you'll be saying, yeah, you're a foreigner. Exactly right, period. If you understand the language, then you're a foreigner. Like I said, if you don't understand the language, then you're going to be seen as a foreigner, whether you're black or not. I'm going to so agree with that. Um, of course, there's uh, Ghanaians that say they know that they speak the language and they still be like, but you're not Ghanaian. You're like, I am, because you got an accent. But there's no doubt that I'm going to tell you, you're going to feel better too. You're going to feel better too. You're going to feel in. You're going to feel smart. said, like, how do you develop close relationships with Ghanaian women? Well, if they speak in their language and you don't know it, then it's going to be hard to get in the fold. Then she's right. You still kind of will be the outsider. You look like them, but you're not. So I agree. I agree. That chief was trying to tell me something. And know how to cook Ghanaian foods. It's a big thing here, the food, because the food is also part of the culture. I mean, I'm going to say that right off. I mean, even like I said, all the vegan restaurants make the food. Don't get it twisted now. They better have some banku. They better have some, they better have some uh, fufu, some kenke. They better. They better. Uh, what? Why well, I'm here? What? Well, well, them ground nut soup. What? Well, you don't have that? They don't try to do it. They make it without all the stuff that you might not want. It's real simple. It's a real, real simple. And I love that. So, yeah, tradition is everything. And language is, is, is a passport. Language is a passport. I, I wouldn't. Thank you, y'all, for reminding me to stay on my game. And like Kwame told me, if you don't speak it, I'm going to look bad. And if you don't speak it well, I'm going to look bad. So I'm going to say to my sister, so up the earth, Mate Casa, oh, Mate Casa, oh, Mate Casa, which I hear your words. I feel your words. Your words were powerful. They, your, your words are heard. Your words are heard. I hear it. Mate Casa, that's something that Kwame taught me. And uh, yeah, so I got to get the greetings. I got to get all of that. And I need to stop being lazy and, uh, you know, 
sit down. And that's why Kwame said, bring your book. We must write these things down. Like, yes, Kwame, we are. But isn't it wonderful to have a teacher who feels like if you fail, he failed? Oh, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Yes, that's true. The first language you must be, be learned in Ghana is tree. You're right, because the majority of people speak it exactly. Hey, Kay, thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you, Kay Butterfly. Please like, share, subscribe, and thumbs up. And uh, tree is there. I know. That's it. I got it. Like, I love tree. Tree, 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 tree. Okay, I love it. I absolutely, I love the language. I love it. It could just, I love it. I love it. I think it's beautiful. And y'all, I'm going to tell you, having my friend Kwame in my life is going to help my language game tremendously, tremendously. And I know it. But I, he, he's hard on me, which he should be, because he's like, where's your notebook? Did you write this down? I told you that. Every time I say something, I get stuck. I be like, oh, uh, and I look at Kwame. Kwame, look, Kwame don't even look at me. I be looking at Kwame, Kwame like, help me. They're talking to me. And I said something. I started it. That's be the look. He's looking at me like. I'd be like, Kwame, help. So he don't. And then later on, he'd be like, I told you that. I told you what that was. <laughs> Get that right. Okay. I was like, yes. And then, like I said, the other customs, don't use your left hand. Like, I've been getting bad at it. I'm doing my best not to use my left hand. You get it. That's right. Thank you. You right. I will. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so yes, y'all. Today is my take care of my United States business, and I'm about to do that. But I got to wait till about 1 o'clock my time, and then I'm going to hang out with my friend Kwame. All right. That's later. All right, y'all. Have a beautiful, blessed day, and I'll see you all in the next video. And oh, my African braids. Come on now. Come on now. Let's talk about the beauty of these braids. Let's talk about it, because I'm in it. And now, you want to see my color? Let me brush again. These braids are beautiful. Oh, oh, I never had twists before. I never had African twists on extensions. What a thing to live this long. To live this long. Look at that. Ooh. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> Did I just do this on national YouTube? Yes, international. International. Worldwide, baby. All right. I love y'all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Take the beauty class that's happening this Sunday. Be there or be square, so you should be there. All right, I'll talk to you later. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Peace and blessings, my Afrocentric.